I approve to approve the minutes that Alan is now reading. Dan. Uh, Dan. <laughs> I don't know who sits in that chair. There wasn't much to that meeting, as I remember. Yeah, it was very short. Next time we meet, it'll be all live. I mean, all bright. I can go home in the, in the light. Yeah. No, I didn't see the send it for you. Let's see yeah. the select word. Second. I second <laughs> the motion. Great. Um, one favor. Aye. Aye. Great. The minutes from February 6th have been approved. So I think it makes sense to skip ahead to agenda item three to talk about the CPA funding um, meeting recap. Um, so it went pretty well. I think it actually went better than I expected it to. Um, so they have the funds without having to bond or right, borrow. Right. Um, but they had so, some concerns because they don't wanna put in $1.23 million on a structure that doesn't have a set plan. Um, and they want to make sure that we get more allies and more town officials on board before we proceed. Well, they said more ideas. So I had a meeting. Uh, I, Dan and I both spoke individually to Mary Thayer afterwards. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Uh, via phone call. Um, and she had spoken with Carolyn Brennan and Gary Berg and said right. that, they, uh, that the two of them were not ready to move forward, that we didn't have enough information for them. I'm sorry, who didn't have enough information? Mary or Carolyn? Um, Carolyn and Gary. Yeah. Why don't they? Don't know. Well, certainly, um, you know, that it's it's much better to have some uh, documents that are more ready to go out to bed. Um, that's hard to get when you don't have. Yeah. Uh, an architect or OPM to to get those numbers. So the the, right. the numbers that we submitted were to include the cost, right, of that particular architect, engineer, or project manager, OPM to develop the accurate costs. Um, <clears throat> so um, that being said, um, you know they're they're finding it hard to buy into it. Because they don't, you know, that, that for some reason they don't think that that um, well, I all see. of those all of those figures put together, being the planning and the um, stabilization efforts, construction, they don't think that all of those can fit into that number. That number. Well, I think <clears throat> you actually thought that because each one of those things was done independently with um, architectural plans already in place for three years ago, that putting them all together, that's what you said, would decrease the cost. Certainly, um, you know, anytime that you, you know, there's economies of scale, you can, you know, you have one, right. you make it into one project, right. you got three different uh, activities going on, you roll it into one OPM's scope of work, it's gonna save you some money. Yeah, you said that. Uh, but that I mean, that doesn't so, that, saying that doesn't necessarily so make the numbers need, up to date. Do we need an architectural person's okay before we begin? Do you think? So uh, yeah, so we'll we'll get to that. Um, that was a discussion that we had at the select board meeting. Okay. Well, what I got from the CPA was that it seemed like everybody was in favor. However, because the assessment was so low, that it will trigger in the ADA requirements. Um, bathrooms, handicap accessible elevator. And so I that's a that's a 
That's a no brainer. I mean, that's a stopper. For right. Well, we're not looking for occupancy of the building. What we want to do is just stabilize it. So we have. But I think there. anything over a certain amount of money uh, brings that into play. Well, that's a. If, if you, I forget the exact figure, but I think if you if you spend more than two thirds the cost of the assessed value, then it requires you to bring the whole one third. One, one third. third. If you right, one third of the yeah. assessed value. And that's not, you know, that's certainly not. Uh, and it's assessed at what, two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand? That building is assessed currently at one point two million, including the land. Including the land. Including the land, but right. what's the building? Um, let me look it up right yeah. now. Um, look it up. So the building is eight fifty five, eight hundred fifty five thousand dollars, and then the land is. Five hundred thirty-six thousand. So one third of eight fifty-five is three hundred uh, two. But we, two fifty. You know, I would look into that and see if that's actually accurate for uh, this type of historic restoration is effort. It, this is oh. I'm not. You know, I don't. I don't know the the ins and outs of that, and I don't know if that statement is accurate, and if that applies to this particular activity. So you know, I would. I would. I, I would say we probably might. have to look into that. Yeah, I think and, it might. And, and, you know, if there's if there's a way um, that we can, um, you know, do some stabilization efforts on this building, you know, without putting in an elevator, <laughs> you know, and all that stuff. I mean, it doesn't make, yeah. you know, we, we just want to make it so it, it's, you know, you're able to use it in the future and somebody, you know, it makes it attractive, attractive. Well, I was worried about the assessment. I thought that was kind of low. Well, everybody's worried about that in town. Um, you know, the, the town hall isn't assessed for very much money. This this piece of property is assessed at, at half of what we paid for the two buildings that are on it, which doesn't make any sense. The two buildings, meaning town hall? No, the, the library and the, oh this oh you're talking about the library this. and yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the senior center are both on the same piece of property and they both were in excess of what seven million, but the whole property is assessed at seven million. Mm. So it doesn't make any that doesn't make any sense. We got to figure out you know, I'm not. I, and it just had one building on it. Well, now the Hunter School, yeah. the Hunter School. Right. No, this is a, the current assessment. Oh, the current. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I don't know how all of that stuff works, and you know, do we have to you know, do us an investigation into that? Is that is that a curveball that somebody's throwing because they're a naysayer and don't want to get into fixing up? But that no, thing? he seemed to be in positive. He seemed to be positive about it. Excuse is me? that Ellen? I mean, uh, Dragon. <laughs> hey. So I think I am a Dragon. I mean. <laughs> So Dan, I think yes, uh, we our responsibility right now or our goal is to stabilize the building. And yes, people need a plan. So if we don't have a plan afterwards, I didn't say we needed a plan. I was uh, but I'm wondering about the assessment. Right. Well, we were um, talking about occupancy. Occupancy? Yeah. There's no occupancy. Correct. There won't be any occupancy. Correct, and people are concerned about putting money in to something that we or nothing will have any. I mean, the ultimate plan, you know, um, is for town to retain the 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 property and the building and get use out of it. Yeah. Um, you know, the the existing. Well, that's the plan for you, but is that the plan for everybody? Well, that's, that's the, I'm question. going. I'm going by the survey results. I'm, you know, I'm, oh. I'm looking at the survey results and saying this is what the majority of people voted. You know, what what they, you know, uh, indicated was mm -hmm. their um, preference. preference for the, you know, the the property in the building. So I'm, you know, I, as a a steward of the townspeople and trying to um, help them get what the majority want um, or would prefer. Um, so that you know, that's what I'm. You know, that's my focus. Okay, okay. So that being said, um, I know that the existing town hall is 54 years older than the rest of the school and was originally built as a one-story structure. Mm -hmm. And in 1909, they added a second story to the existing town hall to expand, to make it, you know, compatible with, you know, and update it for, for a growing town. Um, so in fact, 
the existing town hall hasn't been expanded for you know increased you know usage by town for, for over 114 years. A, 114 years ago is the last time we expanded town hall <laughs> to to make it. I mean, it's been updated and things things yeah. were done in the 60s yeah. and 70s to yeah. to bring it more to modern code. But the elevator in there is not an elevator. It's oh, a oh I'm afraid yeah. to go in there. So, you know, yeah. my point is, yeah. you know, if we get some use out of this building, it should be done right. And will it cost as much as it did to build this building? Probably. Will it cost more? I doubt it, but that's not for us um, to say. How much did this library cost? It wasn't that expensive. It, so was, it, it was around Five, seven. Seven? seven? Um, so that's, you know, well, that's, that's a lot of us. <laughs> the fact that that uh, Park and Rec is crammed into that front office in there, they got all kinds of totes full of toys and games and stuff. Wild. Yeah, it, you know, I'd much rather see them on the side of the road that's adjacent to our new playing fields. Um, and I, you know, you there's some this building. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the Russell School building Russell. has nice big rooms in there. They could do art classes in there. They could do uh, yoga classes in there. They could do a ton of different things in those different rooms. Right. And you know, I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that if we fix the building up and started to get some use well, out of it, that you'd have more than just parking. Did right. Carolyn not have enough information or really appreciate this building and the, the um, value of it historically? You talked to her, right? Uh, I did not talk to her. I didn't, I didn't talk to her one-on-one -on -one about this building. Oh. You did, right? I did. And, you know, my sense is that she's only one person just like me. And she would like to help the town get what it, you know, go down the proper road for the town. And she's, you know, with no allegiance whatsoever. And she, you know, she's being very fair. And, um, you know, she has to, she hears mostly from the people she deals with, so select board, mm -hmm. the people in DPW. DPW. And, and yeah. you know, she, she hears mostly from that. She doesn't hear mostly from the well, town people. So... Uh, I, I couldn't hear Mary Thayer very well from the Zoom meeting, but it sounded like that she had been talking to Carolyn and Carolyn wasn't too enamored of going forward with his book, with his project. Is, is that what Mary Thayer said? I couldn't hear I, she her. Was very well. ready. She was ready. The conversation with Carolyn Brennan happened after this meeting. Mm. Um, really? Oh, the way she was talking, it sounded like she she had a lot of misgivings. <clears throat> I don't remember. Be, to be intro yeah, to them. I don't think so. I mean, I, she she would. I think her point is she would like to see, um, you know, some more. <laughs> although we've given her the whole survey that the town has been asking, you know, the select board's been asking for for the whole time. We want to know what townspeople think. Well, we gave them that, and so you know we have that. But what I think she really wants to know is, oh, sure, we're going to put a roof and, and fix up the brickwork and do some fenestration and some retaining wall work. But what's the next step? What, where do we go from uh -huh. there? She doesn't want to see it sit. CPA doesn't want to see it sit. CPA has awarded money for the Goodwin, old Goodwin building, and that's just sitting. That, and it yeah, hasn't gone anywhere. They've all taken out of the way it, by now. You know, yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm... <clears throat> I'm fairly confident that the reason for that going south and not going anywhere is because of COVID. And the oh. Municipal Building Committee did not have meetings for a long time. That's right. That's and right. we didn't get things going and people were separated. And, yeah. Um, you know, it was a good thing that we got uh, um, Hadley Media hooked up in there when we did, because they were like a lifesaver for this town mm -hmm. uh, to keep people connected. Mm -hmm. um, but the project does need to move forward. They have identified uh, dollar amounts and they do have bid ready documents. Well, if it's two years or more, it goes away with the CPA. Right. So but they update they I think they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna update, but they're, they're they'll asking, need a they'll it. need an architect too. <laughs> well, they have one. You know, they we we've done a bunch of work on that. I mean the 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 specs are skimpy and sparse. But there's enough to go on to get the project started again. Um, and it, you know, if if we don't put money into the Russell School and we delay it even more, the the uh, either the cost to renovate it goes sky high, yeah, or the building sits and deteriorates. Yeah, more. it'll have and to be torn down. I, you know, yeah. 
I just right, want to do right, what, right. you know, do yeah. with the town. Is that everybody's sick of listening to it? Everybody's sick of looking at it. <laughs> what needs to something needs, needs to happen, and I I want to make it happen. And you know, I I know that CPA a good amount of CPA people uh, are for the project. Yeah, it seemed like all of them really. You know, I'd point out that we have spent uh, uh, in excess of three hundred fifty thousand dollars on the cemeteries in Hadley, <laughs> and. You know, the people, yes, who built, know that. the people who built the Russell School are buried in those cemeteries. <laughs> and um, I'm sure that if if they had anything to say about it, they'd say, put money into what we built for the living. You know, pay not attention to my gravestone. You know, I mean. I mean you know, and too bad Mr. Oakley isn't still alive. I did my whole gold award project for Fred. What? With cemeteries, so. That was your project? Mm-hmm. Process. You know, I think it's a great thing that they're, you know, CPA has been spending that money properly. You know, it's a good thing that they did. They put money into the cemeteries and the fencing, and they, it's a good thing that they they put money into the the playing fields and all that. Uh, but in my opinion, we've been saving the CPA money for a long time for a reason. I think this bill. Oh. I mean, if you look at Amherst CPA, whew, it's zero and in debt, way in debt. Yeah. I don't um, want to put our CPA there. If we, if we, well, one guy said he didn't want to go into debt. Yeah. No. And the it, guy it, then had to go to the bathroom. And it, it just increases our likelihood of, of securing more grants to fix the building up even more if we spend CPA. Well, money. what about just doing one of the things this time, the roof? Is that, have you two ever considered that or not? It was discussed. Yeah. I mean, I. Who discussed it? Uh, was it a CPA or was it at the select board meeting? Not at the CPA. Okay. Right. Yeah, I, I know it was discussed, um, you know, and, you know, at CPA, Andy Klopacki did um, did bring up the point and, uh, that uh, if you just do one thing, like just do the roof, well, you just, you're leaving the rest of it at, oh, yeah. at risk. And it's important right. to, to- And your, your um, idea of using local people to fix it up, I think that's against the law. For a municipal building, it has to go through the proper channels of get going out to people. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. sure. I, I'm not saying you could just hire somebody and go out there, but well, the, just, the people who put the roof, idea. the people who put the roof on the uh, on the safety complex are local, and they won the bid. Mm -hmm. You know, they're a good company. Uh, they put the roof on the on the uh, on the good one, I believe. Well, what do you two think about or three thing think about just doing the roof? Um, and sliding out of this right now and then go again next year. Well, the other thing that uh, one of our municipal building committee members brought up <clears throat> is that, you know, we could save a ton of money by just putting an asphalt roof on. I know. Okay. And if we did that, we certainly would buy about 20 years. And then you could have the 20 years to probably do most of the other work that needs to be done in that building before you actually put a real roof on it. So, I mean, that is an avenue. And um, it's a valid point. Um, yeah. you know, this this idea comes from a guy I have a lot of respect for, and he's not wrong. Um, you know, should we steer an OPM? Should we secure one in that direction to, you know, just use a temporary roof, just put an asphalt roof on it, so, so it that we can make, yeah. well, so that we can afford to do the uh, brick yeah. stabilization and the retaining. So well, what do you guys think about that? I don't know. I just feel like it's a band aid. Um, yeah, it is a band aid. Throwing more money at something that's going to have to be fixed anyway, properly. Yeah, yeah. this building needs. <laughs> this building. This building, you know, the, the roof is under question. It's asphalt. And there are questions. <laughs> How old is it? Two years. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but that's that's a that's an industry problem. They've been right. having problems with with asphalt shingles for a few years. Now. How do you feel, Dragon? I just, yeah, I kind of feel like Russell School has come up so many times in the past 20 years in terms of what are we doing with it. But that, never put on town meeting floor. But that it needs to be its time, you know? And as much as I love the building and want to see it restored and stabilized, you know, if we're not able to get town meeting support or be able to do that with like this go around like I shall grieve <laughs> but I think we need it needs to be time and I think everyone's kind of ready for it to be time 
um, for to either to stabilize, to stabilize or, or unfortunately move on mm -hmm. with the story of Rockville School. Yeah. I uh, mean, it's certainly, it's, um, you know, it's, it, in my opinion, it's worthy, you know, after, mm -hmm. after touring that building so many times over the past couple of years mm -hmm. and knowing how strong it is mm -hmm. and knowing how there are so many other buildings in this valley who, mm -hmm. that are older and are of the same type of construction and are still occupied and still in use. It's really silly. Such a handsome piece of architecture. It is so visible. It's, so many people. it's really silly and irresponsible <clears throat> to not put the money into it when we are in the perfect position right now. Mm -hmm. We have well, we're not in a perfect position. We are. That's the problem. I we think don't have we are. Money. <laughs> but I'm 110 percent supporter. But it's like, at what point do you keep kind of supporting the same mission or whatever, and and don't have any different results, right? The reason we don't have the different results is because it's never come up on town meeting floor, on town meeting yeah. floor, as a singular issue. When CPA money was applied for to fix the roof last, mm -hmm. the town quickly gave it. Mm -hmm. Anytime we needed CPA money. When was that? It wasn't long. It was only a few years back. Oh, no, but it wasn't done. It wasn't enough money to do so, what needed. Oh, I see. So, so it know, just disappeared. It, well, the the project never, you know, went out to bid because, it, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the initial estimates were so, fine. Yeah. Well, let me tell you about Amherst Town Hall. When we were restoring that building. It was a big brouhaha about wanting to do, it has a slate roof, and it, but it's pink. <laughs> and to, to, yeah, to find pink, uh, uh, enough to restore that roof or replace it, town meeting said no. So it's been patched all these years. It's been patched. And if you look at it, going up Am Amity Street and look at it, you can see the patches and they're ugly. They really are. But at least the, the building doesn't leak. And you wouldn't see this roof as visibly as you do the Amherst Town Hall. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe this asphalt roof is the way to go. I don't know. I would hate it, but. I would see it as a, as a uh... A a means to continue uh, yeah. further restoration. A band aid is yeah. what it certainly what is an, an effective band aid for a bunch of years so that you can get the other more expensive work done. And um, there are other avenues, but th can the town? Well, how about it? patching it? Does it work? I mean, if they do it at Amherst Town Hall, it's really kind of old to do. I mean, the thing is with, it's, with that, slate, it's the same age, right? But the, with slate. It's slate. It's pink slate. Right. With slate, it will last a long time, but it's it's the material that it's nailed to that's falling apart. Yeah. And it's the flashings and other stuff that's deteriorating. Well, that's all that, been, that was all taken care of. But. You know, all that it really needs to be replaced. Um, and, and you know, whether it's replaced with slate or metal um, or asphalt. Well, you said metal is the same. Expenses. I think that'll be roughly the same as, as slate, uh, but I, you know, we don't know without without getting an OPM. You know, we need that. You know. Well, do you think that's what we should ask for first? Then, so no, what? maybe I'll just skip ahead. Um, <laughs> so Carolyn Brennan connected us to a man named Jake who works for the Architectural Heritage Foundation. Um, based oh, yeah. in Austin, um, but their statewide nonprofit. Um, that aims to stabilize and uh, rehab historical buildings. He is willing to give us four to five hours for free to uh, yeah to estimate the cost. Um, so Dan and I are meeting with him on Thursday uh, to give him a tour. Um, he's he will be hourly after that, but hopefully he'll be able to stay within the five hours. If not, you know, not too much past that. Um, which I think would be really helpful to have an actual updated cost uh, mm -hmm. for the stabilization. And I think well, that's can he be... can he do this estimate? Yeah, that's what he'll be doing. He's an architect or what? 
Um, he's not an architect, but they specialize in stabilizing structures. So I'm not sure exactly what his degree is okay. in, but yeah. So um, who's going, so Carol and you? And Dan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I think that's going to make CPA happier. Mm -hmm. It's going to make select board happier. Mm -hmm. um, and having that information at town meeting, I think, mm -hmm. will also be very good. essential. More concrete. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, actually, what you just said, it's not just state. It's a nationwide thing, I think. Heritage Foundation. The Architectural Heritage Foundation, I believe it's just Massachusetts, but I bet you there are other heritage foundations. Yeah, because that that program I listened to about the spring house in Springfield, yeah. I looked it up and it wasn't Springfield, Mass. <laughs> so I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, this is just uh, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. but I'm sure there are others around. And you're meeting on Thursday. Yes. Oh. Um, and I, I also got an estimate from Old Mohawk, who did the 2013 study, um, to update the feasibility study. Um, and it, the cost was $8,400. How much? $8,400. I think they're such a, an incredible resource that, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, if there's any way that we could, uh, that we could have them, um, you know, virtually join one of our meetings or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe on Zoom. But who would pay for the 8,400? Um, so we could apply for CPA funding specifically for that. In addition to the 100,000 or 1.2 million? You know, it would be an adjustment to the application. But if this person can do what Old Mohawk can do, Right. For free, then we're going to proceed with that. So we discussed that at the select board meeting, and everyone was pretty happy with with that. Oh um, yeah, any anytime you get something for nothing. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, oh, we should just do that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, you know, there's been there's so many people have commented to me about you know we can you you know somebody owns somebody else owns this building they don't have to pay prevailing wage, and you know. I'm There's, sorry, what you said? If someone else owns that building, they don't have to pay oh, for oh, building. Oh, that's right. So there's but been a lot, of, a lot of that comment um, comes yeah. from a lot of different people. And, yeah. um, you know, it, I would love to say that, that you know, there's a group of people in town who would be willing to form a 501c3 and, and uh, you know, uh, go at collecting money to, you know, to, to fix the building. In fact, Hadley Historical, I went through their um, articles of organization and they're hundred percent eligible and, and you know, they, they can certainly collect money to be used on that building. Um, would the town sell that building to the Hadley Historic Society for a dollar and let them apply for the CPA money? And let them do the fundraising. The, the town of Hadley probably would, but I don't know that the historic society wants to do that. Wants to do that. I mean, I, I yeah, I would be, you know, overjoyed yeah. if they would entertain the idea, and you know, I jump, I jump right on board, and and uh, you know, I can certainly help do fundraising and presentations, anything we could do to uh, to gather money so that we so that we wouldn't have to spend prevailing wage dollars to fix the building up. Um, you know, I would encourage them to put a deed restriction on it that, you know, first right of refusal if the society goes under or if they want to, you know, divest of Not the building that mm, Hadley has oh first dear. right of refusal to yeah. take the building back. Um, you know, there are so many possibilities, but just like you said, if people, you know, people actually follow through and, you know, do the, you know, do that kind of thing is, you know, it's us in this room and there's a few people out there, but. Well, I don't know. To, to just, to, just to do what the majority of the town wants. Does know, the I, historical society speak to the historical commission? Well, that's a, you know, that's a huge problem. At a there's little a lot jealous of and commissions, yeah. societies, a lot of people yeah. are just you know, working against each other. Yeah, it doesn't get unfortunately. Yeah. You know, and when we, 
You know, when the town, when these buildings came up for question, you know, the new library and the new senior center, people voted overwhelmingly. You know, they knew what they wanted. And the town pushed back and the town, you know, the town hall pushed back. They didn't want to spend the money. Nobody wants to see their taxes go up. But in fact, the town didn't mind if their taxes went up just so they could build these new buildings. And well, there was great publicity at town meeting for the uh, sure. senior center. It showed pictures of what, what the hooker building was like. And it just, I think everybody voted for it that night or a majority of people voted for it. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I just can't see that, uh, you know, just because there's a few in town who would rather not. Uh, well, can tell, or is it all right to hear about the select board meeting? Because I'd really like to hear about it. Yeah, so um, we basically give an update of what we've been working on, um, mm -hmm. and we received some pushback, more some more aggressive than others, um, but uh, folks were mostly concerned about putting money into a building where there's no plan. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem with that is we need money to get a plan, and we need a plan to get the money. Um, which Jane did say that we're sort right. of stuck in a circle. We're stuck in a little circle, yeah. Yeah. And it's and it's, not getting support from town officials and right. such. Well, um, which is silly because one of the select board members was on the you know the Hadley Master Plan, and his name is right on there. And yeah. you know, is it Randy? Yeah, and it's like, well, I mean, I would expect Randy to be working for town. Yeah, yeah. and working but for what was the town. he one of the ones that was in? Well, he's concerned Western. about you know having you know a, a, a not solid enough plan, and um, you know. Well, I, we need to get that plan from someone, mm. probably a town official. Right. What? A plan from the town official? We need a plan for the building from someone who can make that decision. Well, the other way to go around, I mean, the, the, the way we got the plan to update the Goodwin yeah. after the town bought it back from the trustees is we had our on-call consultant draw up some blueprints and actually put within the blueprints planning board room, right. park and rec room, <laughs> TV5 room. Historical that's, commission. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. <laughs> simple things. That's the plan. And you know, that's you know, that's what I would encourage. Um, you know, if we could take well, these existing drawings that we have from DRA yeah. and just put those put those labels on there. Um but who makes the decision who's gonna go in there? Well, we can certainly we do, can do as, just do a proposal. We can we, we could, could, could do, do the same thing yeah. the municipal buildings committee did and go and interview. Um, the, the departments in town yeah. and see who squeezed for space. Um, we did a space analysis to find out who needed more space, who was, yeah. you know, who's, you know, how many offices are 10 feet from the center of Route 9? Yeah. A bunch of them. You know, how, how many windows rattle? What's the matter with that? <laughs> that's just really loud. It's, just, you know, in a building that's even older than the Russell School, it's really loud in that building. To I know, I've been in there. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't wish that for the future. Well, I know parks and recs, um, but would other departments be willing to go in there? I think they would. I think um, a, a, a couple of the people in town hall, when I asked them about the Russell School, said, oh, can I please have the bell tower? You know, <laughs> can I please have, please give me the room that faces the, the Hoyle Grange so I can have that. Room. Oh, when they're So, nice. you, know, you know, people would enjoy that nice quiet. It's a very quiet building. You know, with all that brick, well, and yeah, it's, so, it's, it's built so much, well, much farther from yeah, Route Nine, and right. doors don't squeak. It's such a solid and strong, quiet building. So, you think that we should go around and talk to different people in the park in the town departments and so, see if they'd be interested in using? Sure, we could create a little space analysis. And but so, my concern is, I read through the Goodwin application, mm -hmm. and they accounted for space for Parks and Rec, Conservation mm -hmm. Committee, Hadley Media, and Town Storage. Which I just learned today. So, um, media and town storage. Town storage, yeah. Like what? So, uh, from the for clerk department. Uh, they didn't. I don't know that they specified. Um, I think it's I okay. Just it town storage. Okay. Um, but when I'm talking about Russell School, I say, you know, there are all these needs for. <laughs> for the town, for offices, for storage, and all these things. And I mentioned Parks and Rec. And so if there's already a plan, then what 
what are we going to say is going to go in Russell School? Well, I mean, you know, we could ask Park and Rec, would they rather be on the side on the side of Route 9 where the playing fields are? Yeah. Closer to Hopkins Academy. Or would they rather be in this building closer to the library? No, not necessarily any fields. But then what's going to happen with Goodwin? Um, I'm sure that the future of I it's a long way away. Like I said, the last time we expanded town hall was 114 years ago. And just expanding to the Goodwin building, I don't think. You know, and that's that's a great thing, but I think expanding into that building is more appropriate. And the reason we oh, it's so close to town hall. It's I mean, they could walk back and forth if they needed to. Yeah, it's yeah. easier to cross that road than it is to cross Route Nine. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess I do wonder what departments may not be redundant. Right. Well, I know that the I know that Hopkins needs more space, mm -hmm. maybe for admin space or something. And those standards to bring it up to you know use for classroom would be a little different than town. No, it yeah. would necessarily be for classroom administration. Yeah. Oh yeah. We could um yeah. So which what did you say? Was it the library that was script um for parks and recs and yeah conservation committee oh yeah. where in the heck are they gonna be besides here in the good one. We're oh you about said the good one yeah. not this building. Yeah. yeah yeah but that's a long way away. You know, well, yeah. they've already been approved right. with CPA money. Yeah. And the, but it has it's gone on. away, though. The CPA says you have to work on it and have it finished in two years, which seems ridiculous which, to which, me. But which you can get an extension for. Yeah, I think they're going for the extension. I think it's on it's it's an article on the, on the one. Not this one. Mm -mm. I don't, not that I know of. But isn't the town working on RFQ right now for it? The, the, I saw the bid specs. Yeah. Oh, for Goodwin? Yeah. yeah. I, I actually gave them to you. So, I mean, they have, they, you know, the, the, it's, it's meager. There's not much there, but there's enough for, a, you know, a contractor knows what he's doing to give them an accurate price. But it's not really a full set of bid specs. Um, it's, you know, it, there's enough, but... And uh, Jennifer's concerned that it may come back and not, you know, they won't be able to get accurate prices. Yeah. Or the prices will be there. Um, the, they, there is a problem with, you know, uh, no, it's, materials and supplies, uh, price, prices and availability are all over the place. So it's not appropriate for Parks and Recs. I'm sorry. A good one, library. Well, I would agree with you. And I would leave that decision really up to Park and Rec uh, commissioners. And, you know, and I, so I, where are they right now? In town right hall? now, they're stuffed in a little office in town hall, and their programs, I think, are spread throughout the town. To say we're up there. Which is always going to be the case. North they were up in North Hadley Hall. They were based there, but their programs were spread throughout the town. Um, I don't think that would change, but I think it's a better facility. It's a, you know, oh, yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's a bigger much, space. Much. Um, planning board, you know, with, here, with all know. the playing fields, you know, out there that are being expanded. Yeah. Um, we could be park and rec center of the planet around here. You they do such a great job. Um, you know, I'm, 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 For Hadley. Yeah, I, have, I haven't been over to this Monday night pickleball. We always have our meeting on Monday nights and I never get to <laughs> pickleball. I want to go over and do pickleball. Um, anything else about the select board? Well, was there just one person that was really against it or? That was really against it, yes. Yeah, well, you know, everybody has concerns, you know, and they're, you know, they're valid enough for us to take a close look at. So we yeah. shouldn't really ignore just because one person is dead. Well, I understand that, but historic safe for the library and for the um, senior center, how many, were there a lot of concerns for that too? Maybe this is just... Anxiety before the step. Yeah, I mean it could be, but you know, again, you know, I, I just want to just want to go forward with the project until there is no other way to go. And you know, the, if if uh, if it's town hall or someone in town hall that keeps forcing us in circles, you know, I don't have control over that, but I'm going to do what the town's people are indicating they want. To, to the nth degree um, until something happens because it's something we can't just sit on it and wait 
or yeah. it's a, yeah. a you know it's it's disrespectful to the, the rest of the surrounding towns to just let it sit there and you know we have the means we have the triple a yeah, plus that's bond. the thing we have the triple a plus bond rating we have new buildings to work out of we've got the money in cpa to do the stabilization efforts that we need to yeah, do. We do there's no reason to go backwards or let it stagnate now is the time now is the time and you know um the, the fact that that we have act, active leaks in the roof and you know does it really make me angry so, i'm a licensed contractor in the state no, and we just over there and i can fix that roof in about 25 minutes and I could see. probably save it from a lot of interior damage You're in a kidding. very, very short amount of time. Oh, Where does the, that it's a wizard. <laughs> Where does the water go right now? There's a map. Onto the floor. Where? Onto the lovely maple floors that don't squeak. <laughs> On the, is there an attic? Yeah, it comes in. So it goes into the attic. It goes into the attic, but it, you know, it keeps going back. Gravity keeps pulling it. Yeah. On, its, on the walls. In through the wall. No, it comes straight through. It, it'll, it finds its way through the attic and lands on the second floor. So, so you showed one picture that had a bunch of junk in the middle of one of the floors. There's two the two rooms. The bell tower. There's a big section of mm -hmm. gook on the floor, and in the center classroom, there's a bunch of stuff so what, on the floor. Yeah, I saw that. And the and second classroom the, is where they did excavation. The yeah, there's some water coming in there. It's not making damage yet. But if you leave it, it's going to start to erode. It's going to start to make damage. Um, it's a it's a leak that was repaired several years ago with CPA money, and uh, it huh. it worked for a few years. But this was in you know uh, efforts to save the building because we had planned to. All the OPMs that worked on this building and that building and the one in North Hadley Hall were doing so under the impression that we're going to save that building. We're going to put any money into it right away. So they yeah. knew we weren't going to fix it up for a town hall then because we had to spend money on some good, mm -hmm. usable, safe structures for our current people. You know, this building is for the future people, just like the people who built it built yeah, for the future. Right. They built it for themselves. Have, have we talked to the planning board? Does the planning board have any opinion on this? Yeah. Sure they do, but I, you know. Uh, do we need planning board? I don't think so. You don't think so? I mean, they I, all have an, well, they, the, the, the school in North Hadley, which is a community, so they had an opinion about that. They well, wanted to tear it down. Well, that that's what's our goal from getting their opinion. Is it going to change? More support. <laughs> I'm not thinking we'll get what we're looking for. I don't know. So, all right. So we have until March 27th to collect all this information to present to the CPA. Well, what's so, the info? I don't. What information do we have? I'm about to the heritage the her thing. Right? Yep. Yeah. So uh, I'm check glad in, to check in with town hall mm -hmm. uh, to determine who in town needs office admin mm -hmm. storage space. Well, I can do that if you want. Okay. Who would appreciate um, more office or a quieter, <laughs> a quieter place to work? Than um, I think we should meet with Carolyn and Gary. I uh, do too. You know, I'm, I'm to get them comfortable I've with, been with the unsuccessful plan. Successful getting a hold of Gary. Um, uh -huh. You're not successful. I have been are. unsuccessful. Okay. Uh, he was very accommodating for a bunch of um, uh, a bunch of the meetings, and as of late, I haven't heard from him. I'm sure no, that he's, he's getting stuff. frustrated with it, and he really doesn't want to talk to me about it. You know, from the beginning, I mean, he was one on the municipal building committee who voted for the, you know, I have it right here in this book that he voted to save the building to, you know, and, and I'm sure now he's just, he's jaded, he's finished, he's yeah. sick of listening to it because he's worked for a bunch of years to, sure. to help this town. And it seems like, you know, and I, you know, I look at the, at the uh, annual town reports, they're not paying Gary half of what he deserves, half of what he's worth. Really, you know, and yeah. I would be frustrated if I were him too. Yeah. But you know, I I feel bad that he, um, you know, it, you know, he's no longer, uh, you know, a champion for the, you know, that type of activity for the Russell School. Yeah, I feel sad, and you know, because he's, you know, I remember Gary's dad from from Boy Scouts, and you know, well, he voted to he voted to support the stabilization. Yeah, but that was so many years ago. Oh, well, what about so the last meeting? The last right? meetings, he's been like, yeah. So I know our goals are the getting the bid from the heritage. Yep. Um, also keep us like board informed and comfortable with our decisions. 
learn if the school has to adhere to stretch codes, which uh, is in effect on uh, July 1st of this year. Um, collect the most current assessment of the building, which I found on that website that you... Um, and what, what is it? It was the 1.39 that we discussed um, at the top of the meeting. Um, provide a list of other grant opportunities, draft an RFQ for town hall to review, um, collect a letter of support from the climate change committee um, mm -hmm. because uh, saving a building is more eco-friendly than demolishing it and building another one. Mm -hmm. um, and Dan is joining that meeting on Thursday to hopefully get approval from them. Um, from climate change. the climate change committee. Are you gonna send all this to me, please? Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so we just, we have to figure out what exactly, do we need to adjust the CPA application based on yeah. everything that's transpired in the past yeah. week or two? Uh, one of the things that Mary did mention is that the, the, uh, the, the awarding authority would be Town of Hadley and, you know, she wants a specific yeah. uh, entity, be it, you know, uh, the select board or, you know, municipal building committee or whatever. Um, you know, what we put on our application, you know, we're trying to be respectful of the people who are the actual stewards of the building, uh, town administrator and town maintenance guy, Gary Burke. Um, town administrator, she'll do whatever because she wants to do what the town wants. Yeah. But Gary has been, as of late, against the, the building project, you know, against the, you know, restoration Just, project. He voted against it at your meeting? Um, he did two weeks ago. He voted against it at municipal building committee meeting, and but mostly because there's no plan. He wants to see a plan. You know, he doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'll quote him again. I don't want to see you put a roof on the thing, and then the bell tower falls yeah. over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I respect that. You know, Gary's a smart guy. He knows that that you know that is a possibility if you do this wrong or if you don't have a continuing plan. Um, but you know, again, it's you know, I take Mary's point. Because, you know, are we actually putting this, you know, this plan or awarding this money to people who don't want to do the project? You know, I mean, geez, uh, uh, if we were in a holding pattern before, boy, yeah, well, be but these people are they do that. These are people who work for the town. Sure. Right? Yeah. So How they need they to do, do with that. They can't be asked of them, correct? It's true, but I would never ask someone to do something for, you know, against their will you know i, I sure. begrudgingly work for town i mean most of the people who work for town you know are frustrated already and i don't want to task them with something that they are wholeheartedly against you know to me that doesn't make any sense it doesn't help town you know i i, I you know who who is that town meeting votes though that's the that's the bottom line yeah you yeah, know i think I, you know i think gary would would you know, would change his sure. mind if he could, you know, if he actually did get a million and a half dollars to work in the building, boy, he'd be psyched. Yeah. Would, would it be a bummer because he has to pay prevailing wage and you don't get as much for your buck? I know. Yeah, that's pretty frustrating. Um, but at least he would know that the, the project should be done right, like yeah. the senior center. They had an OPM there. Uh, Jane said, oh, I'd work with Colliers again. And, you know, I would too. They did a great job. They did screw up. Well, they screwed up one or two things. Okay. But Nobody's they made... Hurt. They made good on it. That's what the they did. Was. Yeah, they fessed up. They said, this is what we did wrong. This is what we're going to do. And this is what we did wrong over here. There's nothing we can do about it. And this is the avenue we're taking. Now shut up. <laughs> and that, you know, that's what we need. Every and, builder yeah, has that. I don't want to put this on. You know, the thing is, the, the fact that this is this project, the money we're asking for is under a million and a half. We don't need to go for an OPM. And we could potentially dump this whole thing in Gary's lap. No, we don't want to do that. That's not what I want to do. We don't want to do I, You know, he's got enough going and he, he can't even do the building maintenance that he was hired to do. You know. So maybe the town should hire somebody else to help. Well, that's very they the certainly need to. They're in the process of looking for another. They certainly need to. Uh, they they want to hire two people, but they're looking to hire this, at least one person. This, this town is so short staffed. It's unbelievable. And I just want to help. I know they're short staffed. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm happy that I gave the last eight years of my life and we. You know, you, we built three new buildings with it. You know, that's great. I'm, you know, yeah. but I think, you know, the town deserves more than that. They deserve for their historic structures to stand strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, all right, you're going to send all that to me, right? Yeah, I just sent it to you. Um, My yeah, minutes so are crappy. 
And so are we adjusting the application or are we just going to collect all this information and hope for the best? Right. And unless I think we either we just do one thing, the roof, or yeah. we go for the whole thing. Whole thing. That's my opinion. So if we if we go for the whole thing and we don't adjust the application, could they just say, I'm sorry, we can't do this, but we will do the roof for you? No, because what they're looking for is, you know, like closer to bid ready documents. They want to know the scope of the work that need, needs to be performed. Um, so, and in fact, we have to uh, put more effort into um, a, a more definitive scope of work. Um, you know, uh, develop a plan to to uh, remove the existing roof, uh, use a certain type of product to replace it with, do it in a certain time span, um, you know, lay out a plan. And, you know, this type of stuff, we, you know, we, we can't do without that OPM. And, you know, we need an RFQ to go out you know, identify somebody qualified to put this plan together and then have them develop these bid specs so that we can put the project out to bid. And if we're stuck in this holding pattern yeah. and we can't have it. It's, it, you know, the, the, the project needs to be made, you know, should we, should we separate into an application for, okay, we want $100,000 for planning. And then we want the 1.1 million to do the work. We could do that. Oh, that's an idea. Um, because it will, you know, a plan to do the roof and the uh, retaining system and to, to point the bricks, you know, just that plan alone is going to be about $100,000 yeah. um, to do it, you know, through a registered architect, you know, somebody who wow. knows how to put this, this stuff together. Architects aren't cheap. Um, really not. And I run out into a lot, I do a lot of commercial work. And that's the first thing that the, Business owners do not want to spend money on an architect because it's no, right off the bat, like one thousand dollars yeah. for a bunch of pictures. And as soon as they draw it wrong, it's another five thousand dollars to correct it. Uh, so, what are everyone's thoughts on that? Separating out the plan versus the stabilization funds. Well, I think what Dan was just talking about was detailing the roof. And most every that other was, thing. That was like a for instance help. statement. Yeah. But all of the, uh, each one of those things will have details to it. Right. Yeah. So, high, you know. And I guess that's what people want. And will this Heritage Foundation do that? Not sure. Not in five hours. <laughs> Not in five hours. <laughs> it was 40 hours, wasn't it? No, mm -hmm. three. Four to no. five. Four to five. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have been nice. No, that's true. Well, maybe if we just get them to concentrate on the roof. The thing that the town, the, the, the town's town hall seems to be most concerned with is the procurement process and what needs to happen. Um, they don't want to, you know. They've been under the microscope for open meeting law and they're getting sued by different town people, blah, blah, blah. And they don't want any more trouble. So they don't want to break any procurement laws and get stuck with some kind of lawsuit and you can't blame them. So as long as we go uh, forward with this in the right order so that they can feel comfortable that we're not going to send them into a, a, a yeah, yeah. endless pit. So should this um, Heritage Foundation, that should that be advertised? Doesn't seem to be. I think open meeting law means the majority of one committee, right? Yeah. Or yeah, or that's uh, not, an educational. That's something different. I think that, that you know they'll give us their their uh, opinion on the building and what it's going to take to. I don't know how much of an actual actual estimate they're going to give. But right. I don't I, know if there's going to be a ballpark number. Or like yeah, I think they can now. give us a general scope of what it's going to take to put you know plans together. You know how many hours they think it would take to put plans together and scope out materials lists and things like that. Yeah. Well, if the roofs were done, if we get money for the roof at this town meeting. There is a town meeting in the fall. We could 
asked for another thing at that town meeting and then another thing at the next town meeting. I think the roof really needs to be number one. Yes. Yeah. yeah, at least at least repaired. Like again, I you know, I can it's just frustrating for me knowing that I can go repair that in a very short amount of time. And the, the fact that we're jumping through these fiery hoops and not getting to that is really, really frustrating for a guy who knows how to do it. Um, I, my general sense and feeling is that people are going to want us to ask for what we need for the building and then not ask for things for a long time about Russell. Yeah. I agree. You know, and that's that's one reason that I, I you know, Alan and I sort of came up with a, a short list of things that need to be done to stabilize it. And with that, is, is does that amount of money come up to the required uh, status where you need an OPM? It doesn't. But it comes so close that I would actually, I, I'd probably hire uh, a project manager to oversee whoever does the work mm -hmm. so that you could get that done. And beyond that, um, you know, th then once you spent this kind of CPA money on stabilizing that building and it becomes very visible in the, in the county, um, yeah, like your, your ability to capture grants mm -hmm. opens up. People mm -hmm. see that you want to spend. And so, you know, fundraising av availability goes through the roof, you know, um, the closer you are to completion. My my challenge is that if we just ask for the roof, people are going to be like, we're in the same place that we were. Yeah. You're just fixing the roof. Yeah. The entire building's not stabilized. There's no plan. Right. For all the things. Yeah. Right. Occupancy. And we don't want to invest that. Right. That, that's yeah. what I'm. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I would you know, you know that's not, yes. that's not the, uh, you know, where we want to go. We want to see use out of this building. We want plans to continue to, to fix it up. I mean, it really does need, uh, you know, proper accessibility um, to get into the building, yeah, right. to get out of the building, <laughs> to, to, you know, to use uh, restroom facilities in the building. That's going to cost a lot of money. Um, you know, I, I don't know um, how much Companies like Home Depot and Lowe's have donated to Park and Rec and different things, mm -hmm. but I know that yes, if we if we did a fundraiser way. on that building, boy, they'd like to have their name on a sign. You know, project completed, cooperation <laughs> with Home Depot materials, blah blah blah. Huge fundraiser, um, you know. And you know, sh should we really ask um, the? Uh, the historic society, if they're willing to at least handle uh, incoming donations, um, and I can help with that. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. you know, we could start fundraisers. You know, between yeah. between GoFundMe and uh, different ways of raising money, just to have them accept the money and keep it in an account, keep it in escrow, or whatever they need to do to hold it until we find a project or. You know, okay, we have enough money to do the bathrooms. It's going to cost three hundred fifty thousand dollars to build new restrooms, and really that much. Well, wow. if you you know if you go prevailing wage, absolutely. But I'm willing. You know, that's one of my specialties. I can do commercial can bathrooms, do bathrooms right class. You you know, just like we have here at this building or the building next door. That's what I do for a living. I, you know, I'd be I'd be happy to donate my time to put it together. You know, some company donates the materials. You get LK or. One of these big plumbing yeah. suppliers donate stuff. the library do it? They had a fundraiser. Yeah, they're a five hundred one c three. They so they can they can do fundraisers. They had the big thermometer out front of town hall. And we're not um, this building committee. I guess is not a five hundred one c three. Oh no. <laughs> no, we can create one, well, but it's a lot of paperwork. It's nonprofit, isn't it? It's a lot of paperwork to create that. Oh, I see. Well, the historical society might be. They are. And I, uh, I did look at their articles of organization and they are qualified to handle the money. So, I mean, it's it's up to them though. They're, yeah. yeah, I mean, I understand if they don't want to take it on, but I'm yeah. also happy to yeah. do the both. Alan's a member there. Alan's a member there. We could right. ask him. Yeah, you know, very I, involved. You know, I don't think they're, um, they, they would be opposed, mm -hmm. uh, but are they willing and able? That's a different story. Right. Um, I mean, I certainly think that 
fundraising within a community would be great. Um, we're not going to raise $16 million that way. We might raise a few hundred thousand. Um, uh, Granby Historic Society raised over a million for their buildings. Yeah, but that's one million. We need 16. Well, that to make it for, we're, we're just asking right now, one million. <laughs> but we need a plan for yeah, that. You yeah. need a plan. For what, for I mean, the fact the is, you know, yeah. again, a bunch of those, a bunch of that $16 million, again, and I'll say it again, was to, the reason they came to those numbers, because every one of those projects was separated out, and the soft cost yeah. involved with replacing the doorknobs <laughs> was separated. The soft costs and architectural drawings required in replacing every element of that building. Was a separate was thing. separate thing so, railings steps, you know another set of steps. All of that stuff was separated into you know uh, to different. So what what do you think the the cost would be? More toward what the old Mohawk you know came okay. up with, you know more about you know six million. Okay, that, that's more, huge difference. Much more feasible. Um, yeah. so well, I did put together that list of grants. I don't know if anyone had a chance to look at it. Um, but there's like a dozen grants on there. Um, and some of them are smaller. Some of them are, you know, $100,000, $50,000, but some of them are up to 750,000. Um, and they all have, you know, there's their um, uh, specific categories that they want to focus on. Um, uh, I think if we end up doing a community center or a parks and rec center or something like that, we'll have many more opportunities for funding. Um, people don't necessarily wanna fund admin offices. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these are community building um, uh, foundations. And, and I don't think I got that. Hmm? I don't think I got that. When did you send that? Uh, two weeks ago, three mm -hmm. weeks ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, the reason all this is so much is they've separated this DRE reports elevator 1.1 million, accessible restrooms 397,000, and accessible six $19,000, uh, step handrails $16,000, interior stairs $37,000, replace knob set $74,000. The knobs. <laughs> uh, repair, repave, repave parking lot, $61,000. Sidewalks, $74,000. Unstable grades, $194,000. Uh, trim and columns, $49,000. We got the gist. <laughs> it's all this stuff is separated out, and each one has its soft costs of, you know, the brickwork. Just the soft cost alone to, to do the brickwork. Is thirty nine thousand dollars, where the total cost of the brickwork was one hundred seventy two thousand uh, dollars. The roof came out to three hundred forty eight thousand dollars, where the soft cost was eighty. Now, all of that stuff was separated out to 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 show what it could potentially cost. Sure. Which comes up yeah. to yeah, sixteen million dollars. Right. If you do every one of those jobs every other year, it yeah. could be a fortune. But that's not what we're looking to do here. Yeah. So I think if we move forward with any of the grants that are listed here or any that we come up with um, that aren't on this list, um, I don't know who's going to do all the grants because the grants, uh, you know, obviously take a lot of time. Yeah. Um, my background is actually fundraising, but I uh, have never written a grant before. Um, so that is definitely not it. my specialty. I have done that. I have too. Yeah. <laughs> we can do this. Hate to say. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, all right, so what are we doing with CPA? Are we separating out the 100K or so? I think or... maybe we should, um, you know, we'll, we'll make a, a, an email to Mary and ask her if that would be a good idea. Sure. And if she's amenable to that, or, yeah. and we should also ask, um, we should get together with Gary and, uh, and Carolyn. And well, tell I thought you two were doing that on Thursday. Yeah, and we'll, yeah, if we could see. Except, yeah, about something else, though, not specifically about this. Maybe she can, maybe Carolyn can stay after. And we can tell her. Yeah, we should definitely quiz them and ask them if that would be a more palatable approach. 
is to have it separated into two different because in fact it, you know their PA usually likes that yeah in yeah, fact their their point is if we spent a bunch of money on the on the design work for the repairs that we're asking yeah. and the and those estimates come out to be super astronomical because of product availability or something yeah well that makes it unpalatable and unrealistic yeah. and that's what they want to see they want to see that the you know the numbers haven't gone through the roof yeah. over the past six years because of COVID mm -hmm. and different supply chain problems. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, when when you look at the actual laws, um, the designer, I read this today, cost estimate requirement, uh, maybe advertised at the winning authority, cost estimate is greater than one year old. Thus, before advertising contracts for design services subject to the designer selection law, construction services subject to Massachusetts General Law 149, um, or any energy management services, you will need to have obtained or prepared the project cost estimate within the past year. So that's what they're looking for. They want to see updated numbers. And it's, those are simple things to get. Yeah. But if they're not allowing us the money to do it, right. we can't do it. And yeah, what we've sure. done is Let's include it in our account. right. We included it in the one application, so they're they're like and and without the acknowledgement that yes, well, the money all goes back if we don't use it, and that's you know, yes, you look, that's right. If you look at the CPA, right. that's exactly you know, right. A lot of times, it, you know, we've, we've applied for CPA money of seventy four thousand dollars, and seventy three of it came back. The project wow. never went through. You wow. know, the planning indicated that it, you know, it's not going to work, and they're not acknowledging that fact. They they want to see that the project's going to forward, and it's not going to come back, and they want to spend all the money and sure. do it right. And but, you know, I respect that. That's, that's right. you know, that means that's the that's where they want to go. That's great. So yeah, I think we should definitely. We'll ask Mary. We'll ask Gary and, and Carolyn. Okay, that sounds if, good. If we if it's a good idea to separate that out. And then you and I can talk we'll talk offline. Yeah, about and we'll we'll we updating can, the application. Yeah, we'll update the application, send it out through email. And Open see. meeting law. Well, if this if there's only two of us, we're talking no, about it, right? It's not corn. Yeah, we're talking about it. <laughs> okay. I can't talk about the plan to happen offline. It as long as it can't be a quorum. Oh if, no, it won't be a if quorum. If two of us or one of us works on yeah. something, we can, you know, okay. we can do that all day long. But if we start inviting everybody into the conversation yeah, that, that, um, without, you know, uh, publicizing that we're actually meeting, it's against the law. Correct. Right. So, well, Dan, you uh, warned care. Um, Courtney and me at the beginning of this process about open meeting. Well, I saw it I saw it happening in town and I didn't want, you know, I don't want to get us stuck there. And it's like, well, you know, we just have to do what we have to do. And so be it. We're, you know. And it can be information sharing, but no deliberation. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I think Amherst was much more strict then. Which uh, brings us to the other thing. So item I'm, on the agenda, which is the the conflict of interest training. Everybody get that done. Oh yeah. Oh, Let's yeah, that we did. the deadline was March 2nd. I'm all done with it. Thank you. Did you do it? I couldn't get in, and so the clerk showed me how to do it. Is that a no? <laughs> I've done it many times in the past. Not done it yet okay. This year. <laughs> and then, Carolyn, you did it? No, I couldn't get in, and so the clerk showed me how to get in. So I got in, but I hadn't finished it. <laughs> okay. That was today. Okay, great. But I have to have minor surgery tomorrow, so I've got to go home in a minute. Okay, no problem. Um, any new business? New business? Yeah, I wanted to check in about, um, are folks familiar with City Space in East Hampton? Um, so it's um, the old town hall, or city hall rather, that they built in, uh, they um, fixed up to be like a, a maker space. Yeah. yeah, so they have art on display. They have somebody with um, uh, they have a framing yeah. store. Yeah, we go there. They rent out this. Oh, you do? Yeah, we oh, Okay, there. yeah, yeah. So it's a really beautiful space, and they're in the process of uh, fundraising as well. So I got a tour um, last week, 
it's a beautiful, beautiful space. So it got me excited about, you know, all these opportunities that we can have with Russell School. But they lease it from the town. The town doesn't have to deal with um, fixing anything up because um, the, the nonprofit maintains the structure. So just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's the other thing the town could probably lease the Russell School to the Hadley Historic Society with the stipulation in the lease that the Historic Society is responsible for every and all repair. And oh, then then it, we avoid prevailing wage. Right. You know, which would be great. And they can lease it for a limited amount of time, 10 years, 15 years or whatever. Yeah. Give them just enough time to fix up the building. Um, you know, those are possibilities that just, yeah. you know, for one reason or another, you know, if there's if the commission or the the uh, society doesn't get along with town, you know, I know yeah. that was a, quite a while ago. Maybe things have changed. You yeah. know, maybe maybe it's, it's healing now, and we can get on with it instead of fighting. There's too much division. Yeah. One thing I did bring up, um, I should mention, I um, asked town administrator. Um, and Gary through email, if there was any way that we could get a bunch of volunteers together, a couple of builders, me, maybe building inspector, Gary, fire chief, a few builders together and build a temporary access ramp so that people could safely get into the building and view it before town meeting. Uh -huh. You know, we could we could escort tours. That's a you good know, I'd idea. Be, I'd be happy to. And Gary came back right away and said, we don't have that kind of insurance. So due to lack of insurance, we can't do that. Is there a way around that? Is there a way to get an insurance rider? Can we, is there a way to, to boost our insurance for a limited time so that we can build a temporary access ramp so that people can get into the building safely without uh, having the issue of liability and they can view and see for themselves how strong this building is and how beautiful the views are from yeah. inside the building. Can you ask Carolyn that too in your little meeting? Yeah, I'll, I'll approach it again. I know just it's to me, it's you know, I see the when you when you go on to Hadley Media and the meetings open up just before meetings, they have a view from Russell School, of yeah. those little red houses. Yeah. Yeah. that I've been help, I've been fixing up those little red houses for the property owner over there. And it's just to me so ironic how. What are you talking about? The Russell School, or the one in North there's University? A, no, the, there's a view from Russell School, shooting down across the way toward those little red houses that are on the corner of Goff Street. Oh. And I've been working for the for the owner of those that property oh. fixing up those houses. Oh. And it's that those houses are older than Russell School. By the same by about fifty they years, are. they're older than Russell School, and the, the view Cute. is. Amazing, you know. If, if you ever go into that building and you look at this view of center of town, yeah. that's would be such a waste. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, I, I hope that climate change committee agrees. It's just it's just gonna cost way less to put a roof on the building than oh, it is yeah. to build a new building and then put a roof on it. Definitely. Way Definitely. less carbon footprint. <clears throat> I think we'll be in some of it. I think so. So who's going to talk to them with climate change? Yeah. I'll go to that meeting. I That's approached uh, uh, Jack uh, mm -hmm. before his meeting uh, a couple of weeks back. They were very busy that day, and I didn't want to go into the meeting because I was not on the agenda. Uh, but now we are on the agenda. So Also, in terms okay. of accessibility, there are grant opportunities to uh, uh, add. I noticed that, yes. Yes to add accessible things to like elevators and stuff. Elevators, yeah, you can get grants. And if you, again, if you put CPA money into the building, those grant opportunities open up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, all the people worried about spending too much money on the building. Well, guess what? Just grants for that. Yeah. What else do we have? Uh, just scheduling the next meeting. Good. Um, so should we do maybe the first week in April? After the CPA meeting, that would be April 3rd, Monday. Okay. Yeah. That works. 530. 5.30 again. Of course, we'll have daylight savings time then. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay, motion to adjourn. Second. Second. One Third. favor. Uh,
All right. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.